Many people would say that what distinguishes the human animal from all other animals is that we have language. We develop morality. We have culture. We are conscious. We're able to use tools. We have a sense of humor. We can make music and so forth. Now, all of this is true, but all of this also runs up against the fact that every single one of these qualities, to some degree, can be found in other animals. And it is, it is, in fact, possible to point out elements of morality in animal behavior, to point out how animals use music, to show how animals do develop culture, how they use tools. So none of these is uniquely human. However, before we go overboard by saying that we're just another animal with nothing special, it's worth noting that there is an incredible chasm between what we can do and what, animals can, what other animals can do. That chasm relates to intelligence. I don't think any of us, even if we think sometimes we communicate with other animals, are going to sit down and discuss Einstein's theory of general relativity. Or I'm not going to describe to my golden retriever the identification of the Higgs boson. Or to take biology to explain that we are the species that now has invented the CRISPR technique for gene modification. The physicist Sean Carroll just a day or two ago in The New Scientist, had a column entitled, It is mind-blowing what our puny brains can do. There is a set of capabilities that we humans have that transcend anything else in the animal kingdom. And it's important for us to recognize that and to appreciate how wide that gulf is. Uh, this is Stefan Alexander, a new colleague of mine at Brown. He is a theoretical physicist, but he's also a jazz musician. And he's the author of the book, The Jazz of Physics. When you find another species with whom you can play jazz or discuss physics, let me know. Mm -hmm.